Hello, it's Shari here today, and I am going to be showing you how I made this Little Mermaid themed reveal wheel card. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut the front panel of my reveal wheel, and I'm going to be using the new semicircle add-on for this card. This will allow me to create a full circle. So I'm just going to pop that into the little puzzle piece area. I've already got a piece of washi tape that kind of holds this in place. I just leave this piece of tape on my die all the time. I'm going to cut that front panel with, from some white cardstock, and I also cut the wheel and the little spacer wheel as well. So once I have that cut, I can take off the semicircle puzzle piece here and just line up those two edges with the die cut area from before. And this will allow me to cut another semicircle right below it. So you can see I have a full circle here. Now I'm going to do some ink blending onto this panel, and of course I'm going to speed this up. So you can see all my blending here. I'm going to use some Distress Oxide inks. I use Twisted Citron. This is some Peacock Feathers. And I'm also going to use Mermaid Lagoon. So you can see I'm just going to cover it completely. I'm being very careful when I'm blending in the center of that circle there because those two small pieces of paper are what's holding that center and I don't want to be too rough with it. I don't want it to rip. So just be careful when you're blending there. You could also do the blending first and then do the die cutting. That's also a possibility. So I'm just going back and forth between my two colors and it will cut down on the harsh edges between these colors. Now this is the Mermaid Lagoon, so it's a bluer color. And I'm also getting some nice color variation where that Twisted Citron crosses over onto that Mermaid Lagoon and Peacock Feathers. It makes a nice darker green. So it gives a nice oceany feel to this. You can see as I go back and forth between the blending tools that those harsh edges will start to blend out and things will start to come together. Now I'm just adding some clean water and this will activate those inks and give it some bubbles to the background and some texture. I also need to blend the same ink colors onto the wheel because this wheel is what we're going to see through those windows and we want it to look like one seamless colored background. So I'm just using the same inks and blending it onto the wheel. I will also flick this with the clean water as well to get the same texture effect that you see on the background. In addition to the clean water, I also have some white metallic watercolors here, and I think this just adds a nice look and added to the texture with the water droplets as well. Now I put that aside to dry and I'm going to work on the images for my scene here. And I'm using images from four different stamp sets. So I've got mermaids from Mermaid For You. I've also got some fish from the You Are Sublime. I've got some fish from Fantastic Friends and I'm also using the crab and a shell from Life Is Good. And I'm just loading these all up into my Misty so I can stamp them all at once. Now the little fish from Fantastic Friends, I'm going to stamp multiple times. These are going to be the fish that go into my little window. And I'm stamping all these with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink so that I can color them with my Copic markers. So you can see that I took those little tiny fish and I stamped them out eight times. I've got four of each kind. I'm going to put those in the circle and I'm going to color those in kind of rainbow colors. These are going to go around in the wheel. Other than that, I'm just going to do some simple Copic coloring on all my other pieces here. Starting with the rock that the mermaid sits on. And of course, since this is a Little Mermaid inspired kind of card, I'm going to color my mermaid to look like Ariel.
So I did figure out wh which fish I wanted in which color kind of beforehand when I was figuring this out. So that's why I started with the purple one there. You'll see as I go along, I am going to color these in rainbow order. But I went ahead and colored one of the ones that needed to be purple, purple. Um, of course, my little Sebastian crab is going to be red. And now I'm coloring these sort of in order so that I don't get mixed up and I don't mess up. And now I'll have them all in rainbow order. So I started with purple, but I'm working my way backwards here. And then my last one will be pink. I went ahead and colored some of the sea life and seaweed. This little guy I'm coloring here, he's sort of my version of flounder. I don't really have a flounder fish facing the right direction. So I'm coloring him in blues and yellows. He's flounder-ish, I should say. And now that I've got all my images colored, I'm just going to use the coordinating dies that go with all these images and cut all of them out. Now that I have all my pieces cut out, I'm actually going to sort of reinforce my reveal wheel. So I find that a lot of times when I do inking, because I'm pretty heavy handed with my ink, it can kind of make the paper not as stiff as it would be without the ink. So I'm going to show you how I did this. I'm also going to cut the backer piece that goes with this as well. So I've cut a front and a wheel, and then I've cut the backer piece. So I'm just going to glue these two pieces together and just make it a nice thick sturdy wheel. I feel like this helps it spin a lot better too and it's not prone to bending when you're spinning it with your finger. So I'm just going to add a bunch of liquid glue, line that up perfectly, and then I'll just set a block on it so it'll dry nice and flat. And then for this front piece I'm going to reinforce it as well. And so what I did with this is I lined it up and then I traced the opening. And then I used a circle die that's actually bigger than that circle that I traced. So you're never going to see this. It's just going to sort of reinforce the edges and make this front panel a little stiffer. So that circle is actually bigger than the one that I traced. So all I have to do is line it up. And then I'll also set a block on this to make sure that it dries nice and flat and sturdy. So I'm going to use the Reveal Wheel templates. This is the semicircle template. And I'm going to use this to help me place my fish. Now, you, if you wanted to stamp the fish, you could also use it as a template for that too. But these were just easier to die cut out. And I like the nice little white border that the die cuts give them. I'm putting them in their rainbow order. And I'm just going to use it to place them. I'm not gluing them down just yet. I'm trying to get their spacing just right before I glue them down. So once I have their spacing in there, I will just pick each one up, add a little bit of liquid glue, and glue them down in their spot. I'm also going to use this template to line up my window. So I've got my brad and my little wheel that goes on the back. And I can just put the brad through that template because I'm going to be able to take that off here soon. I'm going to add some foam dots to that little spacer on the back. Then I can line up the template with the window that's cut in the front. And then I can line up the whole panel with that back panel that's solid. And my wheel will end up in the perfect place. 
So now that that's stuck down, I can just open that brad back up and pull that template right off. Now before I stick this front piece on, I'm going to go ahead and put all my decorations on it. So I've cut a piece of craft card stock just with the bottom half of that front ruby oil panel just so it has that nice stitching detail. And then I'm going to use one of the stitch till sides just to create my sand down here. And I'm going to place my mermaid and my rock kind of where I want them just so that I make sure I have my hill in the right place, my die cut where I want it. And I'll just hold that in place with some washi tape and run that through my die cut machine. And now I can add this to the bottom of my panel and start to build my seam from there. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp my sentiment at the top. I've used Jessie's ABCs to write out life is the bubbles. And actually that piece I just pulled off was a C. And because the C is the same width as the B and there's only one lowercase b, I just used it as a spacer. So that's why I pulled it off. You can see where that second B is missing. So once I have that stamped, I can pull off that one lowercase b and just fill in the space with that missing letter. But the C was the same width, that's why I used it just as a spacer. Alright, so now I've got all my pieces and I'm just going to arrange them first before I start gluing everything down. Make sure that I like the spacing and the placement of everything. I decided not to use that little orange fish. So I'm using a variety of foam adhesive squares here. So I've got some thick ones and some thin ones. So I'm putting some thin ones. I put a thin one on Sebastian there in the center and some thin ones on the fish. And then like this little gathering I'm doing here, I'm going to stick that sea life right to the base with some liquid glue. I'm going to put a thin foam square on this one. And then on this one, I can put the thick foam square so I get Lots of dimension, three different levels, we'll say, of dimension just in that one area. Sorry for my head that keeps getting in the way. I'm just trying to see what I'm doing. So now that I've got all my pieces on the front panel, I've added a whole bunch of foam adhesive to this back panel, making sure to stay away from the wheel. That's why I add it to the back panel. And now I can just lay the front panel and line it right up. And I like to kind of stack it on the edge of my desk, make sure those bottom edges are lined up perfectly. And look how fun this is with those little fish that swim around my crab there in the middle. So now I'm just going to add it to a white card base. And I'm just going to use liquid glue and I'm going to trace around all the edges and then just add a whole bunch in the center. I'm going to center that up in the card base. I really like how this white card base makes a nice bright border around this very colorful scene. And then I've cut the arrow from the reveal wheel dies and some peacock cardstock. And I've actually flipped it over from the normal direction that it cuts so that it points the recipient to turn the fish in the right direction. So they're going forward instead of backwards. How fun is this? I've had this idea for a while and I'm glad that this semicircle die now lets me do it. So here is another look at that card. 
Thanks for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.